it's been a while since I've made a new video. I was thinking about the era that we are in of modern sexual liberation and the deception of sexual liberation and the detriment uh, for men and women, but particularly women. And as I was thinking on it and meditating, I channeled something that I wrote last night that I would like to share with you all. If you'll bear with me, I am going to read from my laptop. <laughs> so, as individuals, we live in a world and society now that focuses so much on meaningless, casual, oversaturated sex. As an individual, we don't truly want for sex. Rather, we desire fulfillment of a human need for intimacy. This liberalist, feminist, lie of sexual liberation is not giving anyone actual freedom because ultimately those who give in to those animalistic urges are indeed slaves to the impulse driven blindly by the underlying need for human connection and intimacy we are created in other words we are crafted physically emotionally psychologically and spiritually wired on a meticulous scientific level to constantly and perpetually seek and long for connection because the state of human incarnation or incarnation into this extremely dense material world is a state of heaviness that makes us strikingly aware of our temporary lack of access to the spiritual realm behind the veil, so to speak. The human soul achingly longs for reunification with source, with creator, with spirituality, with God. We are the unity of God. We are the unity of the creator as creation and as co-creators of this universe. Self into trillions of parts, all of humanity, just for us to find him again as ourselves, reunited, once scattered. So what we seek in connection and intimacy is the reflection of our whole, healed, and unified self. Indeed, to go one step further, we are truly seeking to see our source, our creator, as our self, face to face. This is what is alluded to in 1 Corinthians 13 and 12, my personal favorite scripture. Think about it. When we are born, as human beings, we never see our own faces. Even this very day, we cannot see our own faces except through a mirror or a lens. Think about what our first mirrors were, our first lenses, the eyes of another human being. Usually our mother, father, or hopefully not, the doctor mutilating you in some hospital. We are meant to see our own beauty and wholeness only through the eyes of another. Think about how our best relationships, whether lovers, best friends, truly caring family members, even mentors and encouraging teachers. In our best relationships, someone else tends to see the best in us, the wholeness in us, the divine in us, before we see it in ourselves. This is what we truly seek rather than sex. We seek that person who can look at us and show us our divinity through union that we have always sought externally and never realized was in ourselves all along. That's the unity of God, creator, source. We seek that person who reflects the best in us and through whose eyes we see ourselves as God inside them. And thus, we see them, too, as God. That divine worship in intimacy is sacred sexuality. That is the entanglement, the entwining, the braiding union of Tantra and the DNA. That is true intimacy. That just seeking to scratch that itch satisfy that carnal, base biological urge, or indulge that ego through casual sex, calling it sexual liberation. 